सभी को नमस्ते गुड मॉर्निंग एंड वेलकम वी आर डूइंग यू एच वी थ्री एंड वी जस्ट कंप्लीटेड लेक्चर फोर वी वर टॉकिंग अबाउट नेचर एंड एग्जिस्टेंस सो दिस वॉज मोस्टली अ रिकैप ऑफ वॉट वी हैव डन more details about nature and existence we'll be talking later as we go along in the course uh yesterday on completion there was an assignment that we talked of so now after spending some time reflecting on nature and existence has there been any change in your living pattern that was one question whether we have been able to make any different choices in our living foods that we may be choosing differently in our relationships with nature and how we interact with nature has something changed or even in our relationships with other human beings because we spoke of the human being being a coexistence of self and body so are we able to see this difference in the self and the body or ourself and are we able to see you know what this when we keep saying self is central to the existence of the human being are we able to see it in our living has it made a difference in our life so far the choices that we make the way we think what seems important for us so with all of that we can take some sharings anybody who would like to share about this assignment yesterday to reflect on what we had spoken of and to look within and see does it seem to have made a difference in our living or not yet even if we have not been able to see the difference in our living we can share our observations regarding this uh yes didi it has been a long journey now uh, mm-hmm. for last two years joined to morning session mm-hmm. and really that inward journey is going on and yes the lifestyle uh, i don't know when this lifestyle changed mm-hmm. not done it uh, means purposefully means less like um, got enlightened and then it is being changed by itself what i feel mm-hmm. uh means the food and all quite uh, earlier it was uh, was we all fond of a certain kind of foods so i have already shared that i was very fond of non vegetarian and all mm-hmm. so been left now by itself i just getting the enlightenment and then obviously the lot of uh, uh, entertainment from outside was there because thinking you are the body mm-hmm. so that also has been now uh, uh, like television and all that getting the sensations from outside because when you are in the inward journey towards inward journey you are we are trying to take a temp- means attention towards inside mm-hmm. so uh attention outside is getting reduced so we are trying to look as as we are trying to see the imagination every moment without reacting and then yes um, body is an instrument and this is just for getting the knowledge and enlightenment that also can give you lot of uh, harmony this is increasing day by day uh so uh body and then then even these all these 
physical facilities are again the instruments for the body so that also is now uh, clear means but but still uh, when we lose the awareness then we but then if we are aware means even if I, i i come to know about the body sometimes only when there is some sensation in the body otherwise sometimes most of the times even we are not aware that there is a body at all with when the self only and i just want to share that this all inward journey has been in strength third day by day after listening to you and kumar bhai every day and then one more uh, means this point i want to share that uh, last this week weekend we were at uh, kanpur sansthan mm-hmm. so we volunteers um, it was there and obviously in that atmosphere of um, means simple living and simple thinking we have seen there also uh, so went there and uh, got enlightened more about this and so it has strengthened the inward journey even more uh, so earlier i used to get up at around um, 5 or not 5 or even 5:15 but after coming from sansthan i have started getting up at 4 am now Mm-hmm. because there you have to get at 4 and or like 5 am you all have to get up and i took the duty for ringing the bell so that all get up on time mm-hmm. so again means i'm trying to say means this lifestyle is changing by itself uh just by getting the knowledge day by day it's strengthened and participation in the larger order is also increasing at the workplace at home and all means it has been strengthened that if we have to increase our uh, this self awareness the participation is very important that also i again uh, at, it has been strengthened by visiting the sansthan also they are seeing the people how uh, selflessly team work and all we learned that so it's a very nice journey didi means this is what i right now i wanted to share ji very thank nice you, thank you i just wanted to you know for those many people when we talk about this the first thing is you know how can we leave such and such thing or we'll have to try to control so one thing that you mentioned which i think is very significant it you said it seems to be naturally happening yes. your daily choices seem to be naturally happening so it looks like you are not having to put in that much effort once you understood some things it seems to be just going with the flow that it's happening very naturally so mm-hmm. when you are doing these things waking up early having these sweet food choices now that have changed are you comfortable inside or are you uncomfortable inside very comfortable feeling very lighter as body wise also but mainly as yes, body wise also i am getting means very lighter but I, more important is that from the feelings point of view the the, the harmony which i am getting that is even more important yes body is very important but uh, self is at the center so self is making us to do all this so body is also being taken care of the by itself so i just want to share with the my co explorers that obviously we were thinking as a body so i was doing lot of efforts um, walking running around but uh, yes it was making a body little comfortable in the morning but then a uh, lot of contradiction inside they were not being resolved and we i don't i didn't know that what is the, what is the way so i used to means hear that okay if the body is physically fit your mind will also be fit and <laughs> that proverbs sometime but that was not happening didi Mm-hmm. because body was different and mind is different now we have come to know so i don't know uh, i have given now um, stopped that running and all and i have now i've been earlier also sharing now in the morning i am uh, in the kitchen and then i'm helping my wife also i don't know how that house has happened even i don't know means it has mm-hmm. happened by itself uh, so i have and then I've been going to the college also doing experimentation of cycling and then doing the experimentation of keeping the fasts and all to keep my body uh, means uh, in harmony 
So I've reduced 10 kg weight within the last one year. And still I'm not feeling any weakness and all. I shared with you also. Yes. Sometimes people get worried that, okay, you're getting very thinner. But then my energy level is nice. Even I can stand in the class for four hours, three hours, two hours. It doesn't matter. So this right. is what I wanted to share with all my co-explorers. Very nice. Yes. Thank you, Dini. Thank, Thank you. you to all. Namaste. Uh, Namaste, Dini. Uh, so, <clears throat> so I have done the uh, US um, so introductory course, right? So then after that, <clears throat> I have uh, right now this course is I am attending from the day one mm -hmm. and all the sessions. And uh, earlier I was, uh, though I have a background of psychology, so I understand all the aspect in Western uh, point of view, like self, mm -hmm. Carl Rogers theory and all. But this is the first time I get to know about the self-Indian perspective, which is mm -hmm. very, very interesting. And uh, uh, and I have generally, I observe myself, there are lots of opposition at home or at, at uh, office, right? There are lots of conflict, like whenever I, I react to the various situations. Now, mm -hmm. I have limited all the things I, I don't oppose, the feeling of uh, jo, uh, positivity, the emotion, changing the positive emotions that I always keep in mind and uh, which is help uh, mm -hmm. lots of time and build the good relationship with others. This mm -hmm. is one. And uh, another things I need to uh, right now, I very much not worked at yet. Uh, like in body level, there are many uh, sensations which I need to change, right? Uh, so that I am exploring still right now that I will change. As we do the exercises one and two, you will be able to relate to it better also. Yes. Yes. We will be practically doing, you know, this change that we want to see in ourselves. We will be practically exploring that. And we are coming to that now. And earlier I was trying to accumulate things, right? Many things. I, I thought mm -hmm. I will buy these things, purchase many things. Then mm -hmm. I slowly, gradually dropping all all the idea, all yes. this. Then I, I think, uh, why should I will, uh, whatever I have things, first utilize those things. Unnecessarily to purchase many things and create at home, which is not utilized. Yes. That yeah. is it. Nice. Then nice. Another important thing, like quality of food. Right now, as I uh, discussed here, Je, what we are nurturing body or we are punishing the body so mm -hmm. quality of food we have selected in that process mm -hmm. what kind of foods i have to bring my home for my family so that mm -hmm. i can nurture everyone it's so that nice. has changed nice very nice so now you can see your participation also in the larger order in the family at least you can see that and you can also see that you know, things, when you get the information, you sort of reflect on it from time to time. And for all of us, this natural acceptance is a very powerful thing. Yes, yes. So, when you make the right choices in accordance with the natural acceptance, you feel comfortable. This part, when one experiences, then there is no sacrifice, there is no uh, feeling that you are missing something or you have lost out. Because it is your choice and you can see that you are comfortable with it. So I think that is a very big shift that one sees. And uh, you mentioned perspective. I would just say that, you know, what we are trying to do is not an Indian or a Western or some other perspective. We are just trying to see it the way it is. This is the effort. So what I would say is our attempt is to try to understand the reality the way it is. Not through some other filter. So suppose, you know, I identify with Indian thought. 
then I might go by whatever is written in Indian scriptures, in Indian texts, in Indian tradition, how it is. If it matches that, then I agree with it. If it doesn't match that, then I disagree with it. Now here, what's going to happen is, I have put my boundary to that country. So anything beyond that, anything related to the other country, I may not be able to relate to because I have set a boundary for myself here. So without any boundary, to try to see what is similar, what is universal you know, in this existence, because in the existence there are no such boundaries. We have made these boundaries for our convenience. And we'll see that sometimes it, these boundaries make things more inconvenient. But that aside, the important thing to see is that there is a certain pattern in the existence. And with that pattern, every form of life, every unit in this existence is thriving. There is no shortage. There is no, there is abundance for every unit in this existence. And every unit, if we use that terminology, is recognizing its relationship with every other unit and is fulfilling for every other unit. Now, this is a huge learning. From this, if we can see this, then we can see why can't we do this? Because this is what we want, end of the day. But when we don't see it this way, when we put some filter in front of us, we may miss this. So we are just trying to remove all filters and just see things the way they actually are, directly. So that is the effort. I just wanted to clarify for everybody. Very nice observations. Thank you, Vidhi. Thank you. Thank Namaste, ma'am. Namaste to all. Uh, uh, when we are discussing about the uh, uh, space, uh, space is no activity and it, it has energy and the materials are uh, submerged in the space. We and, didn't uh, talk about uh, energy. We just said it was no activity. Pardon me. We didn't mention anything about energy. See, when you say energy, energy means different things to different people. So we did not use any word energy there. We just said, yes, space is there. It is all pervading. It is no activity. Yes. So, uh, space is not having energy. I didn't say that. I'm saying, see, what do you understand by energy? See, then there is confusion, no? That's mm -hmm. why we don't bring in such terms because everybody has a different meaning to energy. Mm -hmm. Somebody might say that because of this, something else is happening. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. So we are not saying any cause and effect. We are just saying space is there. It is all pervading. It is no activity. Something further you were saying? Uh, and one more thing, ma'am, uh, in a day before yesterday in the discussion, uh, uh, you said that uh, we can see that in every material, there is a cyclability, that is a formation and the deformation is there. Uh, when I observe the things like all the uh, physical material, maybe a wood, air, water, whatever, like a mm -hmm. home appliances, even the material we synthesize in the laboratory also, uh, mm -hmm. they have a, like a formation is there, their existence and further the deformation. Mm -hmm. So, so you can I can see that everything what I see in the process the cyclability uh, I can see and yeah. uh, uh, that is the thing uh, but uh, before uh, that uh, I start that journey I whenever I use the word cyclability I can see only that uh, the circulation of the moon or the 
uh, earth i can see only the cyclicality uh, there mm-hmm. but uh, when i when i sit and observe the things uh, I, for example uh, we can uh, grow the seed in the plant uh, the plant so mm-hmm. we get the fruits vegetables uh, uh, or maybe the wood whatever they are the different form but they are coming from the uh, soil so we can in the grasses we can identify that uh, color formation how it is there but uh, uh, while i am seeing in deeply they are the same nature that is they are coming from the same source but uh, uh, they are in the different form we can able to observe uh, or we can see uh, identify with the formation how they are looking or how their physical features are there based on that we are giving the meaning to them and uh, they will go back to their once again to the uh, the nature that is like a, what we say in kannada like a marali mannige like once again they will go back to that uh, after deformation to the nature only that mm-hmm. i can see and uh, i can uh, i reflect that uh, the word whether i i don't know whether i have to use the word here or not srushti uh, stiti laya so that the meaning of that i can relate here for each and everything like how they will form and exist and go back uh, deformation yes. that's i feel yes yes as we go along we'll see that you know we are able to see little by little some more part of the existence so like you mentioned earlier you could only see it with the sun and moon cycles but now mm-hmm. you can see it in these plants you know things that are there in the soil and so on and slowly we'll be able to see more and more depth right now we are still focusing on the form see we say yeah. we say we grow a plant actually mm. we don't grow the plant no? mm. we just put the seed in the soil maybe give it little water mm. and the rest it's happening on its own on its own meaning mm. we are not making it grow mm. we might put mm. little manure but even if you don't you can see in the forest nobody is putting manure nobody is watering those plants and yet mm. they thrive mm. so and nobody is putting seeds there still they are thriving so many plants are thriving so things are happening in the existence in a very natural manner you know things are in harmony there is a whole harmony is there between all the units mm. and every unit is self organized mm. yeah doing what yeah. it needs to do and we if you observe then you feel there is so much it's like miraculous no all this is there this abundance this life all around it is just there isn't it mm. yeah. yeah yeah so very nice that's how we keep you know as we keep exploring we are able to see little by little more and more and more and right now we may be able to see what we can see with the gross eyes but then slowly we are able to see more and more of what we cannot see with the gross eyes also and so that potential is there in each one of us we need to just pay attention inside more and more and we'll be able to see till we are able to see everything in this existence the way it exactly is yeah nice then so so far we have been just recapping a lot of stuff that we heard of in the uhv introductory workshop or you know the first level workshop that we did or the second level now with that you know interspersed with all of these lectures we will be also having some practice sessions some sessions where whatever we have learned so far we can try to practice it 
see if we can observe it within ourselves we keep talking of paying attention inside observing so we can practically do this if we pay attention and how to go about it we'll just go through the introduction today and then slowly we'll be you know getting into the exercise one so it should be very clear why we are doing these exercises we said that we want to be fulfilled we want happiness and we want it in continuity we've been saying that from the beginning and i think we have all seen that we do want to be happy in continuity even for one moment when we are unhappy it's not okay for us we want to change that situation so now when we try to see this when we want continuity of happiness we said for that we need three things right understanding in the self fulfillment in relationships and physical facility and we said the priority is for right understanding so where is this right understanding this right understanding is in the self so we need to develop this understanding or we need to be able to see these things directly in the self this is going to be the effort now we will see that in this process so far we may not have been paying attention and like we mentioned a lot of stuff we have gathered from outside and that is giving rise to our what we call perspective so i may have a different perspective about the world you may have a different perspective somebody at the office may have a different perspective a relative of yours may have a very different perspective so what are all these perspectives and what is the truth so if we see we have gathered many things all along the way in the journey if even if you see in this lifetime i had a different environment in which i grew up you perhaps had a different environment in which you grew up somebody who lives in australia or us or england had a different environment or africa where they grew up so we imbibe we take in lot of stuff from our environment and we think that is me or that is what i have chosen but truly it is not that i have chosen it it is something that perhaps i heard something that perhaps i saw somebody else lived a certain way and so i was sort of copying that so whatever it is many a time we find that all of these impressions that we gather what we call sanskars these impressions they are there within us deep down and we don't even realize when they come into play so like a simple thing like we grew up with this idea that you know we've read in our books also that life can be a struggle and you know this whole existence it is material and so many things that we have grown up with so now we keep taking all this information and with this information it sort of becomes a part of us in the sense we start living our life in according to this without really paying attention within and seeing is this really true for me is it a fact or is it something that i assume to be true so like that simple example we were taking of the glasses or you can say you know a screen if you have a transparent screen in front of you you are able to see the trees the grass whatever outside the way it is but if that screen is red in color then everything outside appears red to you 
If that screen is green in color, everything outside appears green to you. If that screen is yellow, everything appears yellow and so on. So we color that existence the way it is with our own perspective. This is what sanskars are. Your impressions, with your impressions you look at everything. After all you are looking at everything with the help of the gross eyes through the body. When we do that, we interpret things, the gross eyes can only show so much. The interpretation is happening within us of what it means. So we give meaning to what we have seen through the eyes based on our impressions. So therefore, if we have red colored glasses, we see red. If we have yellow colored glasses, we see yellow. But to be able to see things exactly the way they are, without all this coloring of us, without our assumptions and perceptions and, you know, how we perceive things, but to actually get to directly seeing how things are, that is the effort that we are trying to do. So all our accumulated whatever we have gathered, we need to go through that, screen it now, check on it and see, is it valuable for me to keep or is it not worth keeping and discard it? So in a sense, what we call purification of the sanskars, purification of all this accumulated feeling and thought that we have, that we assume very, very strongly, we think that that is how it is. But we may not know whether that is really the truth or not. So all this we'll try to do when we do the exercises. So we said that we want to live and we want to live with fulfillment. And we don't just want to live with fulfillment now and then. We want to live with fulfillment all the time. Continuous fulfillment, continuous happiness. This is why we are doing this exercise. Because somewhere we can see that we aren't there yet, that we are dissatisfied. Many a time we are unhappy. We may be able to see that there are times when we react, when we get upset. You know, we talk to people who say, no, no, I am happy, I am happy. And the next moment they are crying because somebody misbehaved or somebody did not have the right feeling for them. So you can see that a lot of times we are putting up a brave face in front of the world. But when we are by ourselves, then all these thoughts come crowding back. That we cannot escape from. What is there within us is already there within us. And if it is bothering me, I will keep thinking about it and it will keep disturbing me. So how to get over all this? How to be in continuous fulfillment, continuous happiness? So we all are aspiring for this, isn't it? Our basic aspiration, we identified it. We said it is continuity of happiness. And we also said to, that to make sure that we have this continuity of happiness, we have to develop three things. One is, first priority is right understanding in the self. Second, right feeling, right thought in the self. Now this is in the B2 block. Right understanding in the self is in the B1 block, if you just want to correlate. The right feeling and right thought my feeling, my thought, my desire. That will be based on the right understanding. If, of course, we want to continue to be in happiness. Otherwise, we have been trying many different things. We have been, you know, our feelings and thoughts are being motivated a lot of times by the outside world. 
But if we want that continuity of happiness, that feeling and thought, the right feeling and thought in the self is going to come with the understanding. And when we understand the relationship between all the units. And the third thing we need is to be able to live with this, with the world outside. Because no use if we have it all within us, but then when we go and interact with somebody, then again there is an issue. Then again we are crying, we are disturbed, we are unhappy, we are angry, we are irritable. Then what's the point? Then you'll have to go and sit in some, like a hermit's, you know, hut somewhere far away from everybody else. But even there you will not be able to escape. Why? Because within you, within your mind, there are all these memories, all these unresolved things. So for all of that, to resolve everything, right understanding in the self, right feeling and thought in the self, and with that, to be able to bring it in my living with the world outside, to have the competence for living with the world outside. Because we keep saying we are okay, but so-and-so is like this, then what to do? You know, we, these are the questions we bring up so many times. I am okay, but in my family it is like this, what to do? Or the people in the office are like that, what to do? So how do you develop the competence for living with the world outside? And it's not that you have to develop the right understanding first, completely and then have right feeling and thought completely and then you will develop the competence but it happens as a continuum at every step we are working at every step together so when we say participation in the larger order there you are trying to develop this competence for right living with the world outside and you may not have, we may not have reached the completeness of right understanding. But bit by bit, as we understand, as our feeling becomes in line, as our thoughts come in line, it naturally flows in our behavior. And we start seeing our role in the larger perspective. We start looking at the bigger picture, bit by bit, often starting with the family, and then extending this family little by little outward. So, we are doing these exercises. One is to develop the right understanding in the self. So, if you look at right understanding, we must understand everything the way that it is. So, I am there as the self. I must understand myself. The body is there. I must understand the body. My family is there. What is this family? I must understand the family. Entire society is there. I must understand that. Nature is there. I must understand nature. Entire existence is there. All of existence. So I have to understand all this. Where is this understanding going to be? In the self. How is it going to be? Not by looking outside. It's going to be by looking in, like we will talk right now. Then we said to have the right feeling and thought. When we understand things, the existential reality, when we understand all of this pattern in this existence, we find it reflects a relationship between the units, it reflects a harmony, a sort of a self-organization of every unit and interlinked with every other unit, this harmony is there, and a coexistence. So when I understand this, then I bring my feeling and thought in line with this. So I have the feeling of relationship of harmony and coexistence. This feeling is also in the self. And the third thing that we said, 
we want to develop the competence for right living in the self that means with all of this whatever we understand with that when we have the right feeling now when it comes to interacting with others outside it should be visible in my living isn't it so when i live with others in the world outside my living should reflect this what i have understood relationship harmony and coexistence so if you look at our interaction with other human beings what we call our behavior then every time i interact with another human being not only should i be happy but my living should be such my behavior should be such that the other also is happy so my effort becomes that i am not just looking for my happiness i am also trying to work for the others happiness and when i do this with the right feeling i find that this is how it is there is mutual happiness when i work with the rest of nature then i don't just think of gaining something from nature i also think of enriching nature because i can see the relationship i have the feeling of relationship within me i can see you know how i can work not just for enriching myself becoming prosperous myself but also how i can in the process enrich nature and that becomes an important part of what i want to do and it shows in my behavior and the third thing is the participation in the larger order so not just in my you know immediate circle not just within my own yard but now i see that i am a small part a small link in this bigger canvas so it's like you know a jigsaw puzzle you see a jigsaw puzzle it has lots of small 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 pieces so if you look at one piece you think of something if you look at two three pieces you see some part of it but the picture may not be clear you put more parts together the picture starts to become clear but it's only when you put all the parts there that the entire picture becomes clear so ultimately whatever expands i see i start participating in that and ultimately i see that there is no boundary it's not related to race it's not related to culture it's not related to country it is something boundless that is universal so i start looking to participate with that broad vision and ultimately that is what leads to fulfillment of the human goal and each one of us is important in this even though it may seem like i am such a tiny part in this i have such a minute role but if we can see that ultimately we are working for the fulfillment of the human goal then each part is significant each part is important and if i do my part well then i can say that i have the competence for the right living in the self another hand raised you had something to share or some question yes 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 thank you ma'am for giving me this opportunity actually i have a little doubt i mean we are saying units are submerged in space just wanted to know whether all the units will be of same nature or will it be different we already said no different units are there we'll come to it again but we said mm-hmm. there are material units there are consciousness units no 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 i mean the characteristics of the units i'm talking about we have two different separate units where in the material and consciousness they uh-huh. like i i assume myself to be one of the unit okay and this mm-hmm. is one huge 
uh, like the, the world around me is a space i assume i mean i am don't know how much i might be correct i assume to be part of a uh, big space and uh, i am one of the unit and i cannot i have my family i have different members in my family they are also different units okay so our characteristics our behaviors are all different but we still live in one space we get energized we have our duties we have our responsibilities to fulfill we can take it like that i mean can i take it can i relate it to this is it the same see when you are now you are clubbing many units together isn't it that's what that's what when, when i was I listening say- wondering okay, whether i can take myself as a part of unit when i take myself as a part of unit how uh, can i relate i mean when i say there's a boundary there the units are related to each other so i'm definitely related to my family and wait, then wait, i was wait, trying wait, to wait wait let me just uh, clarify one thing when i say i hmm. who am i as a human being there are two units involved here yes 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 Mm-hmm. i am the self yes and i am coexisting with one more unit that is the body mm-hmm. so there itself you have two units mhm but the uh, body is a uh, instrument to which it takes it, it takes the instructions the unit no it's a unit yes but it can't take decisions on its own and we are not supposed so we are uh, not it, saying that it is that's what i'm saying that all the mm-hmm. units are not the same they have different characteristics this we are saying mm-hmm. from the beginning is it okay 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 as an example the material uh-huh. unit you know the body is an example of a material unit the self right. is the consciousness unit and right. we saw right. the differences between the two so uh-huh. the characteristics are very different yes i myself have two units in me right well now see i wouldn't put it this way i myself <laughs> have two units in me with me yeah. <laughs> okay okay So if i am saying i am the self then mm-hmm. i am associating with this other unit the body mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. see this is where what we were talking about assumptions playing in right and uh, my uh, treating myself as a unit would be a, again a different thing then in the family if i treat myself as a unit and other people around different units that would be a totally different story right well each one is a unit you can see each one has a limited form limited hmm. size isn't it you can That's see true. it in fact right, right right but we are all related to each other we are supposed to play, play our own parts and we need to be in a definite con- conduct so that everyone everything can be in harmony right need to be and now also people are living <laughs> <laughs> yeah but there is sometimes you have an opposition with your family members as exactly. well so right Definitely. now we are not even being able to live you know with the right feeling with our immediate family members no 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 you, see when you when you talk to a stranger you have a different tone and attitude i mean not attitude would be a wrong word behavior and when you talk to your very close family member you talk in a different way it's a friendly and a professional talk i would say and then uh, if there's a uh, there is a a uh, slight misunderstanding with your stranger also you have that uh, professionality level and when you have that misunderstanding with your daughter suppose and you change your tone totally and you say how could you talk like this to me and you know all those things that might not be actually to uh, disturb their harmony but it is to show them that you i own you i i definitely you are my daughter i own you and i have that rights to talk to you like this this is i, I mean i as a mother i would feel that when i have to correct my daughter or i have to tell them not to use a mobile i have a different pitch altogether i Now, let sometimes... me just let me just bring in one more thing okay is it really true that i own my daughter or is it my assumption that i own that's definitely an assumption but you know you have that feeling that this <laughs> is my daughter and i am supposed wait, to wait, take wait, care wait 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 huh now the self the self has its own learning to do the self is on its own independent journey Isn't yeah it? it is definitely definitely so this self in this journey hmm is with you in the family mm-hmm. other journeys may may maybe maybe not mm-hmm. so what is my role this self is there in my family what is my role as a parent is to guide this self mm-hmm. and to help to nurture its body mm-hmm. this is my role 
Okay. But somewhere this assumption comes in that I own this. This is my. Mm. This is mine. Therefore, whatever I say, this person has to listen. This is an assumption. Oh, okay. 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 Just reflect on it. This is. I am giving you one more thing to mm -hmm. reflect on. Mm -hmm. Keep it open right now. Okay. Because if we so look at the pattern in existence, mm -hmm. you will notice that. the relationship is there between all the units mm -hmm. there yes, is no I segregation agree. there is no boundary what we do Definitely. is we mm -hmm. have a feeling of relationship with some conditions mm -hmm. if so and so listens to me i will have feeling of relationship if so and so doesn't listen to me i will have feeling of opposition they still the family they still the family you got to have accept them that this is my daughter okay i will go outside the family now Okay. Right. Okay. 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 Abhi okay. we are not able to manage even with the family. So many times yeah. within the family also we have feeling yeah. of opposition, isn't it? Yes. Okay. Okay. Now, what about outside the family? Mm hmm. Are we not related to those people? What are outside the family? Or is somebody? No, my. Am yeah, I related yeah. to that person or not? So mm -hmm. these are all many things we may have assumed. Mm hmm. How have we assumed? that only my immediate family is related to me mm -hmm. if you go back to this why mm -hmm. we have assumed this you will find that somewhere we have assumed i am body so anything linked to my body i see the relationship anything not linked to my body i don't see the relationship this is a very deep rooted sanskar now mm -hmm. that drives everything for us that drives my feeling that drives my thought that drives my behavior so this is just an example to reflect on mm -hmm. i'm not just saying for you i this is a very common very deep rooted sanskar in most of us mm -hmm. hmm so we need to become aware of all these sanskars we need to become aware of my natural acceptance and see what is my natural acceptance for so even that man walking on the street who i don't know mm -hmm. i have not been introduced i don't know who he is but you still have some kind of feeling yes yes there is a relationship already i don't have to create a relationship i just yes. need to understand that there is already a relationship mm -hmm. with every unit and then if i see my natural acceptance if i refer to my natural acceptance i find my natural acceptance is for feeling of relationship with every mm -hmm. you yes so my natural acceptance is really reflecting or showing me that pattern in the existence i just need to become aware of it that will guide me in the right direction mm -hmm. yeah Yes, ma'am. Thanks. <laughs> nice talking to you. So, um, what we were saying is that this, you know, exercises that we are doing, we are trying to have right understanding in the self of all of these, all of these units in this entire existence. And when we see, when we understand. is we see that the pattern in these units is one of relationship of harmony and of coexistence so with this understanding now i bring my feelings and thoughts in line with this and i have the feeling of relationship the feeling of harmony and the feeling of coexistence in the self and when i do that now it naturally flows in my behavior with other units so i develop the competence for right living this competence i am you know the competence develops in the self when i understand these then i decide to behave a certain way i decide to work with the nature in a certain way i decide to participate all this part is happening in the self with this development of the competence in the self then i express it outside with the help of the body 
so it is reflected in my behavior with other human beings now my effort is not just to look for my happiness but also have concern for the others happiness with other human beings when i work with the rest of nature i am looking for my prosperity how i can be prosperous you know with the nature but at the same time i am concerned about the nature and i am concerned about fulfill being fulfilling for the nature so i am concerned about enriching nature and i do that and when i participate in the entire nature in all of this existence i am looking to be you know participating with that feeling of relationship i am self organized i am in harmony and i am participating in that to make sure that this you know i am uh, sort of contributing or participating in this harmony i am coexisting with every other unit and ultimately this will lead to what we call fulfillment of the human goal universal human order we'll reflect on this i'll also put an assignment